Okay, this is the second game today, and I would like to show a game between uh, National Master Ray Solomon. He's black here, and against me, I'm white, and this was played April 12, 2015, one year ago, right? And I was white, E4, and the first Porter Ranch Masters took place in, Mas in Porter Ranch. He played the C5. We have a Sicilian defense in front of us. My favorite move is Knight C3. I love my horses. Don't you think so? You know, you notice that I move them a lot of times on F3 or C3. A6. Guess what's my next move? And the knight. And the other knight. <laughs> so <laughs> this boy already knows my style, right? He loves to play with his horses. Okay, knight f3, v5, okay, here is, let's evaluate real quick class, because uh, it's only three moves, but look, black played all pawn move. You should start smelling something here. This is not good, right? Because uh, these are only pawn move, they are non-developing move. Not only that. They are all queenside pawns. That means there's no way that he will castle on the queenside. That gives you an idea where his king is going. If either in the center or... If he can get there, he, right? And so too many pawn moves. I can only suggest two, two or three maximum in the opening stage. And the rest has to be used for developing your pieces. I think D4 is your correct move. The correct move here is D4. Open up the center when you are ahead in development remember that rule of thumb when you are ahead in development open the center up so here he has to capture because you are inviting or enticing him to okay you want another pawn move either you if you advance this become a target how so well you can destroy it immediately by a4 and then another pawn move because he cannot allow the capture for example b4 and your opponent was just playing all pawns in the game. Knight here, d5, this under attack. The bishop attacks the c4. And black's king, king king's position, uh, his forces. He might as well resign here. Because he will not recover from his loss of so much time. In chess, time is gold. It's very important. And the battle in, in chess is all about time force and space and so be careful with your moves here he's forced to make another pawn move because d6 doesn't work either because anybody pawn takes pawn pawn takes and then oh. queen takes and we are so much ahead even though sans the queen no queens still better for white so he has to capture and look what happened how to re recapture the knight I was actually thinking about contemplating about queen text bringing another yeah, but, but then I lose a tempo with knight c6 so I said let's just capture with the knight okay so we are up to man out and his next move is e6. <laughs> another pawn move e6 and this is a national master national master Ray Solomon is 2250 so it's not a pushover but this guy just violate one principle after another. He can't be a good teacher if you play like <laughs> You play all pawn moves, nobody will listen to you, okay? <laughs> so, E6. Now, here, the justification class is, believe it or not, this is still book line. And why is this acceptable by theory? Because he said that these are all prophylactic moves. Prophylactic, preventing all important square bolstering them the f5 e6 right the c4 the c6 and so it prevents all of white's activity but come on at the cost of development that's a question mark right it's always questionable so after e6 what should you play here you can continue developing by there's two way to continue bishop d3 or bishop e3 because when i notice that he opened the uh, on here he's probably planning to attack the knight for example bishop d3 is playable then bishop c5 
and we have to withdraw the the knight because for example bishop e3 might be a might be considered a mistake here why queen b6 you see the tricks it's very tricky could we, white could easily go wrong here because blacks uh, move order are deceptive and tricky okay and with, for example where do you go if you knight go here well, capture he lost to e2 put the queen then you or uh, you see here you losing tempo on withdrawing so you have to figure out the proper positioning of your forces after he play e6 and so i decided to cross out that idea of bishop c5 queen b6 battery let's play bishop e3 immediately and we don't know yet where this bishop will go and so after he commit the imagine here all pawn moves his first piece that he brought out is his queen, his queen. What? <laughs> i know that everybody will be angry at black here who is this guy let me know who is it. let me see his picture Okay, first piece that he brought out is a queen. This is violate one principle after another. But again, believe it, believe it or not, this is a prophylactic move. Oh, but he commit his queen so early, so no longer we have to worry about the queen b6, bishop c5. He has a fresh idea in mind. The bish queen bishop battery on this line this time. That is his idea. Very tricky line. This was played actually. Uh, this this position played several times by Gata Kemsky, as black Sergei Roblevsky of Russia, right? And a lot a lot of grandmaster from the Philippines and Asia played this line in China. Uh, so I don't see the merits of black's position honestly because queen move a lot of pawn moves. It's a no-no. Do not play this type of chess in your own game class, okay? So, after queen c7, what should you play? Now that the queen b6 is ruled out, now we can play the bishop more actively on d3. What does this move achieve? It develops. It bolsters, overprotects the e4 square because the bishop is about to arrive there with the idea of b4. And if this bishop is only here, we might even lose a pawn with a bishop here. So be careful. These are all idea, tricky and deceptive chess. Okay, so the bishop should be on white to move, should be on d3, over protect e4 and the center. Okay, after bishop d3, finally he developed a minor piece, this time knight on f6. Now, as good coordination why he played queen c7 now you will understand the idea a class here at first we did not understand the idea of queen c7 we will it become clear in the next move because if he play knight f6 first e5. we have e5 yeah. and so he prepared the development of knight f6 by queen c7 preventing e5 hence it was defined a prophylactic move a prophylactic by definition is preventing your opponent's active moves that's prophylaxis okay that's why you see a lot of h3 h6 a3 quiet moves but they have meaning any question <laughs> oh what, <laughs> what was that did i miss something <laughs> and so Bishop d3, 9f6, <laughs> the move reminds you of something. The queen is the. Like prevents your, your prevents your from getting pregnant. <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> Not in this class, fairy. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> yes. It's your We're in trouble. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Too many kids here. Come on. What's the matter with you? Okay, <laughs> and Patricia is here. He like she likes those kind of stories. Yeah. It's okay. Okay, very good. <laughs> and so after Bishop D three Knight F six Queen D two. Why is it a nice and beautiful and excellent move? 
class. Gives the king either side the castle. Very good. Flexibility above all. It gives your opponent yourself an option to castle castle on either side. It makes your opponent keep guessing where is my opponent going to castle. Correct? Yep. Very flexible. Queen d2. Knight to c6. All right. Now, a knight is challenging our knight on d4. What should you play here? Do we allow the capture? Knight takes knight, then bishop takes. No, because then he's got e5. So, so I would, uh, might be playable, but you know, if uh, we play something else, that knight might not even capture. It might reroute itself here. For example, class, if white castles here, he's not interested in this horse. He wants to attack. Okay. F4, then I would go. F4. Oh. I like it. And then this knight will become pinned. For example, h3, knight takes, queen takes, bishop c5, and all kind of counterplay showing up on the board. And what just happened? It become very dangerous <laughs> for white. So you have to be careful with those active moves. So let's see once again. Remember, that bishop is just waiting for a bad decision from white. from white. So here, the correct move... For example, white can go wrong here. After castle, knight e5. For example, rook ae1, centralization, not a bad choice. Then he start playing here. And guess what? Yeah, you're looking at mate. Because knight f3, I think, would be mate. No, you can take it to knight. H3. <coughs> what should we play here? There are several ideas here. Hmm. Oh, takes D3. Why not here? No, yeah. Attacking the queen and threatening mate. And suddenly white can resign. Yeah. You believe that discovery? The queen combination to the knight here? It's over. <laughs> so we have to be careful. Black is playing uh, a deceptive type of chess with so many tricks. Uh, he got so many tricks in his pocket. Okay. Well, bishop f4, knight takes, and knight takes rook. It's still playable, but you know it it, ru it destroys exactly. the harmony of your your train of thought. You you do, just don't want to play uh, on. <laughs> yes. So and a lot of player when once they lose that uh, what we call their uh, aura in the game, their mojo, their mojo, <laughs> their desire to play it just uh, destroyed them. They make win one mistake after another just because they miss a simple idea. So knight c six. What is the best continuation here? Actually, w he, we should not allow that knight linger there on c6. It might go Trade. to e5, c6. So we have to get rid of it immediately. Trade it. Knight takes c6. Okay? He recaptures with b takes c6. After uh, b takes c6, where are we now? Here, uh, white to move. F4 is playable. What else can we play here? Castle queen side. Castle queen side. Good move, Mitch. Castle queen side because why is castle queen side? I already know that my opponent is with this queen there pointing to h2. It seems that he can have so many tricks with h5, knight g4, and all kind of uh, nasty ideas. We should have to cross it out. We don't have to give our opponent enjoyment in the game. We have to. We want the misery to in, to go through pain and hardship and heartaches in life, <laughs> in the chessboard at least, <laughs> right? Make them suffer, right? So now that the c pile is closed, a queenside castling is very nice because there's no pressure on the c pile very good so after castle queen side he played b4 okay where should the knight go you have knight a4 you have knight b1 knight, 
Knight e2 is better. Why? Because centralization. centralization again is the key. Okay? Now you can bring this knight to d4. If it was on a4, it might stay there for a while. There's no way for it to come back unless you concede certain squares like b3, knight b2, that's time consuming. Right? The idea of knight b6 is ruled out in one move, it's over. Correct? So we find ourselves with a knight at the edge of the board. And they like the saying, a knight on the rim is dim. dim. Or grim. Or grim. So knight e2. Now we have uh, several continuations for our knight, depending on how your opponent moves. You have knight g3, you have knight d4, you even have knight f4. So remember here, uh, rule of thumb, you make you sure that your pieces, when you redeploy them, they have several continuation and flexible still, okay? So you don't lose uh, continuation in your game. The knight e2, he played What happened here? Oh, I'm sorry, we miss a few moves. That's why I'm missing. Sorry. We have to go back real quick. Ah. My apology. This is what happened when you skip a move. Let's go back real quick. This is the position. Okay, queen d2. Last move was knight to c6. Okay, let's go back here. E6, bishop E3. Okay, bishop B7. We have to insert these two moves. F3, bolstering the E4 square. There you go. And, and then, after bishop D3, knight F6. Knight F6, queen D2. Okay, here we are. Knight captures... No wonder this time he didn't capture with the uh, pawn. With the he captured with the bishop. Gotcha. And he castle. Okay, we're back. We play b4. Knight e2. Okay, here we are. And his next move, class, find a good move for black here. Now, there's several continuations. Bishop e7 to castle. Queen a5 attack, attacks the a2 square. Anything else? Uh, how about d5? d5. Or he wants to open up the queen side. And he play bishop b5 here. And after bishop b5, I played. Okay. King b1. Because remember, he opens the C file. After bishop b1, he played d5. Now let's examine the position before us real quick. White's position is nothing to be proud of. He didn't came out of the opening as expected. Suddenly, black's uh, prophylactic moves create some kind of counterplay for him. And that, this is what I miss in the position, this coming of d5. And it really bothers me because the king can now castle maybe in the queen side as well and create a who's this better? Now here let's evaluate who's better. Can you see? The king is still in the center. We are developed properly. He's one or two moves away from castling, so <coughs> After d5 in the Sicilian, normally black is doing well. So let's see. After d5, I play knight d4, attacking this bishop. Bishop d7. Now here, I would like you to uh, just... Uh, Look at the position real quick before us and see who is better. Uh, 
Well, remember, class, in the Sicilian, I mentioned several times that if your opponent is able to play D5 in the Sicilian defense, a lot of times they are able to equalize the game or create some kind of counterplay. And here, if we go back just one move short, the last move we have was Knight D4. But prior to that, he played this very strong move, D5. Now, in the Sicilian, if black was able to play d5, he can free his pieces, create an attack in the center, open piles, and so on and so forth. And for some reason, the initiative suddenly turned to black because he can play e5 here, he can play d4 later on, and those kind of ideas. But the main idea of d5 is to destroy the center. And so here, after knight d4, we attack the bishop, a gain of tempo, very important, because if this bishop was not here, guess what? If the knight is there and there's no bishop, we're not attacking anything, the arrival of pawn here will spell doom in white's position. Why? This pawn is far advanced beyond the fourth rank, and it could create some problem for black very close to the opponent's king. And so, the uh, positioning of the bishop for black here really create a kind of counterplay for us after knight d4. And there's no reason for him to exchange bishop, to take the bishop. Not yet, he said. He so, to open up the a -pi. so, what he wants to do is to play e5 and d4, but because of that bishop there, he needs to move it. So he played bishop d7. So he prepared the idea. E5. If you were white here, now that you catch what uh, Black's idea is, his continuation to play E5, what should you do? Which one? Take G5. I said that. G5? No, take D5. Take D5. Take D5. Very good. E to D5. Because e, E5 might arrive just in time. So after E D5, Knight takes. Right. Now look, uh the activity on black's position suddenly you notice those little little pawn moves earlier now it's paying dividend in his position and suddenly he's <coughs> swarming closer in the position it's creeping slowly in one major problem what to do with the bishop do we allow the exchange Now we want for you to find a move. Uh, this is the immediate threat, correct? Now you don't look at the threat, but look at the other parts of the position and see if you can instead of depending, because your natural reaction is probably play bishop f2, right? Bishop i4. Right? Bishop g5 is also played, but it gains a tempo. Bishop f4. Bishop f4. There's a queen. Cannot be played, yeah. So now we have to pinpoint a weakness in Black's position, a loose piece, a loose, undependent, anything. Yeah, the queen. You, if you put the bishop on f4, we can't because it's attacked twice, depended once. So. And what else do we have now? This knight is well posted, but it's sitting on a square. And within the proximity of the rook on the corner. So the other bishop on e4. Very good. The bishop on e4. We have to create one, the first element and combination that is? Pin. The pin. We have to apply pins, what forks, pin? double attack, discover attack, discover check, double check. Those kind of things. Okay. You always have to uh, pinpoint that in the position. You always have to keep an eye on those kind of moves. Okay. What was that? <laughs> okay you okay there <laughs> i hope you're fine okay so bishop e4 at least prevents for a moment the capture you can, you of can still take that because then he's on your rook. very good now here if i was uh black here of course i will not allow the capture of the knight because it opens up my king this is what's going to happen if we play rook c8 we can capture the knight 
we removed on the very important night on the center of the board and now we have a fresh open of the king side position and and that's this is very dangerous for for black for example bishop e7 we have bishop g5 or even bishop f4 mm -hmm. and it's very problematic suddenly for black with the king in the center now rule of thumb here when your opponent's king is in the center you have to find a way to open the position okay so here I remember uh, I watched a game and US chess live between Gary Kasparov as black and Wesley so very beautiful game that took place in a blitz game uh, Kasparov found his king find his king in the center of the board you know what Wesley so did he opened the position and sacrificed left and right pawn pawn against the mighty Kasparov and when the smoke is clear he was uh, about to get checkmated Kasparov and he said I, I felt like I played Morpy uh, reminds me about the game of Morpy against the amateur and I'm the amateur <laughs> <laughs> and this is a former world champion isn't that an amazing uh, uh, interesting to hear from him something like that he said I felt like I'm an amateur here in this game why because uh, when you violate an opening principle be ready your opponent will get you okay whoever you are even if you're the former world champion they will just get you so bishop e4 he has to capture mitch ross white i have to capture the knight the, the bishop because he attacks also you gotta take the knight the take the knight or take the rook i say take the knight because you still have the attack on the rook he's gonna move well if we take the knight then we are behind a material see we will be behind material. No, you're, you're even. We're even? Dead even. Okay, we're dead even. But the rook was able to uh, create a battery with the queen on the sea pile. I think that's very dangerous. Sicilian. The Sicilian. And must be a good continuation too because that knight is pesky. And it might go back to e5. But instead, this is what I played in the position. That is also playable, by the way. I offer a trade. I capture the rook. He captured the rook. And, you capture with the rook. and then I capture with the other rook. So after the exchange took place, what do we have, class? He has the double bishop. He black has the bishop pair in the position, and therefore that gives him a slight pull advantage. And now, uh, no longer that the king is threatened right because uh the the forces that are exchanged diminish the attacking uh chances for white against black's king and that's a good thing about exchanges when you are under attack exchange and so after rook takes e1 d1 bishop e7 if you're white here what should you play bishop c6 no white to move Bishop e7, so. Um, let's see. I say bishop back to e4. Very good, bishop e4. So that if he castle, guess what? Another element of combination. We can play queen <coughs> d3, right? Or you could sacrifice your bishop. So instead of be after that, to avoid that kind of scenario instead of castling he played f5 first uh, there now it found uh, he found a cure to a possible problem but at the same time creating another problem and this time in the e6 pawn that became backward am i right yep. A backward pawn is suddenly become glaring on the open e pile after bishop d3 so he castled what should we do when there is a uh, a weakness in your opponent's position what is the rule we should apply fix the weakness how do we fix this weakness rook e1, I guess. Rook e1 is one but it play e5 still 
fix the weakness with F4. Alright? Now you see here the E6 cannot move without capture and then we we centralize the pieces. So after F4, we start planning on this stage. And that the plan for uh, white here, and I start planning something here. If I play F4, and I play knight F3, continuously keeping this pawn backward, I will have enough counterplay on my part to keep the game at least e balanced because he got the bishop pair. Remember that. Your opponent have some sort of advantage. We don't have. But after f5, at least we could create an imbalance in the position, even though he has the bishop pair. And that is in the form of the e6 weakness. So after e f4, he played queen b6, attacking the knight depending the pawn depending another pawn okay so good move actually queen b6 so what do we play here the best move here in the position is actually bishop c4 furthering attack on the weakness because of the the pin that is the correct way to continue but <coughs> like once again to error is human i play knight f3 here only focus on my previous idea of keeping this pawn backward maybe even planting a knight there on e5 good intentions but not what is required in the position okay uh, so we always have to play according to the demand of the position according to the requirement of the position threatening bishop takes f4 5 also because you're going to take the bishop at d7 if he takes back correct there is a threat of bishop takes so that is easily parried and with his next move right he bishop played six. bishop b5 now you see the bishop cannot go to c4 anymore so I realized that my knight f3 was a, a mistake, not a blunder, just a mistake, a minor concession, all right? I could have won the game and immediately have a big advantage by bishop c4, but decentralizing, here is my theory here. Your pieces are centralized. Uh, bringing them back is called decentralizing the piece. When it was already in the center, you brought it back far from the actual battle. You're calling them back, right? And so what happened is, it gives your opponent a chance for recovery. And that's what we should have avoided. Because after bishop d5, white's position become actually difficult. Uh, the removal of this bishop with the same color with backward pawn, pawn removes whatever uh, chances of us attacking this e6 square. So after, After bishop b5, okay, hold on, knight f3, he played rook d8 mitch instead of for bishop takes f5. That's probably even better. He prepared bishop b5 because of the pin. So we avoided the pin, attacks this, now bishop b5, because after the capture, rook takes with check, queen takes, everybody follow, queen takes b5, and it will be a fight between a bishop and a knight. Probably slight advantage for black, but with these two pawns, this is what's going to happen. Bishop takes, rook takes with check, queen takes force, black captures queen takes, and uh, if 95, what we have here is in an end game with queens, with two mo with minor piece each bishop against knight but a knight outpost is strong in the middle game not in the end game but remember that it's a different scenario earlier in the middle game it was very strong now we're in the end game what that knight looks good but you know it's not enough because it requires other members that are already exchanged right his his plan here is to play simple a four 
A5, A4, and A3, and so on and so forth. I think black A has some counterplay in this position. So I did not allow the exchange there. So after, let's go back in this position, rook here. After bishop uh, b5, we have rook e1. Avoid. Why am I avoiding the exchange class? Anybody? When you are attacking, you have to keep your pieces alive. Not only that, the plan that we have created several moves ago on the attack on e6 will no longer be valid if we keep exchanging forces okay it can but there's a bishop that will yeah. just capture it immediately okay. correct but uh, now we will have a double pawn on uh, the G pile uh, it might be bad for us as well so after rook <laughs> e1 here anyway we just played rook e1 you said knight g5. He'll probably just capture bishop there. Knight there. Oh, I was well, would the double pawn be that bad if you pushed? Uh, well, after. If you broke up. Uh, the pawn pawns. Well, do we, do we have time after here? No, after the battery. Oh, after uh, after here. That's something to look forward to knight g5. But let's see how black reacted after rook e1. He, sh he played bishop takes d3. Okay, and then cd3. Uh, so the exchanges remove a lot of the attackers on the e pile. This, the weakness is still there. However, when the forces are exchanged, the effect of the weakness also diminish. It's no longer as strong as before. And so here, after cd3, he played rook d6. And now he secured the e6 pawn right. the battery is no longer strong so we have to switch to a different idea and this time an outpost we still have three forces still enough queen and rook protecting that knight we can still create some kind of attack here we have a, a clear idea after 95 what's the threat pork on c4 of the rook and the queen so the, where does the queen go? Um, C4. C7 or? C6. What about queen d4? Attacks the pawn here. You see, black has a lot of counterplay here. A very dangerous position, double edge and sharp. Now, what you notice here is this knight on out, uh, having an outpost on e5 need to be used into pull it back to gain something in the position okay because this is guarded by the knight and the queen this pawn maybe your automatic reply here is g3 but again before depending think of attacking knight c4 knight c4 attacks the knight the queen. but queen text check knight f3 it still gives up this pawn and we didn't gain anything from that uh, so instead the knight is far advanced we have to see this move this attacking move either queen h5 but then there's g6 right we have a threat here queen h5 and g6 then we have to go back or maybe queen e8 okay the best move here without allowing a uh, further uh, pawn up for king so that he can defend himself there on the back rank is immediately create a one move threat queen c2, queen c2 with the idea of uh, check and that's what he did we entice him to capture the pawn and, then, uh, and this game is a game 45 <laughs> delay 5 so probably around here both of us are probably less on time because he captured immediately so queen c8 check now you see here the king has no place to go <laughs> he can block with two but uh, blocking with the rook you have queen text pawn check and so there's only one move bishop 
to D8, that's the only move. However, here, after bishop D8, the correct move here is, and the winning one, again, I missed, to err is human. Uh. This is what I played, queen, Queens uh, B7 threatening check here. The correct move here is Knight C4 because we are having a double attack. Uh, the queen has a double idea of capture here or capture here wherever the rook go. For example, if he maintain protection of the pawn on this line, this one drops. If the rook moves from this line away to d5, to d4, or to capture the pawn, we have queen takes check and mate next move. Queen down. Right? And so this is the strongest move. I missed that class, so forgive me. Instead, I played queen b7. The queen b7 threat here and threatening mate so his move is force h6 to create a lock escape, escape square a houdini act escape okay so after h6 queen f7 check king h7 should we do gain time on the clock queen g6 check King g8, queen e8 check, king h7. So I, I repeat those moves just to gain time on the clock. Suddenly when he was about to claim a repetition, if I keep checking, and he can claim a repetition. Yeah, I, saw the knight f7. I saw the knight f7. That's where I played knight f7. He played queen f2. Attacking the rook. Yeah, yeah. It's queen H8 or? There's a possible bishop f6 creating a mate. It is very dangerous for both kings here. But whoever gets to the opponent's king wins first. Okay, so it's a chasing after each other's king. But good thing it's our turn to move. We have queen h8 check, queen h8 check flushing out the opponent's king. So it has to king g6. Next move. Knight e5 check, king h5, um, queen, e8. queen e8 check, king h4, um, g3. knight f3 check. Those combination of the queen knight, queen knight, queen knight drives the opponent crazy, king g4. Queen g6 check because if he play if he blocks with the bishop, that's a pin. Correct? Right? You can play h4 and wins the game. And so he cannot do that. He cannot play bishop g5. He has to play king f4. But now comes anybody white to play and win? Uh, Very good. It's a mate. Rook text e rook e four check. This is hard to see. You saw it in only a few seconds. What is your name? Kelly. Kelly. Very good. You saw it in so short period of time. After this is force, and after queen text, we have a very rare mate in the center of the board. Wow! Well done. To see that. <laughs> very good. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, class this morning. This is beautiful mate, by the way, but it's very double edge and everybody any. And it, anything can happen in the game. But to err is human. We miss several uh, continuation, better ones, stronger ones. But to resign is divine. Okay? So <laughs> have a great day, everyone. See you next Saturday.